damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 341. Yikes. We are nearing the end of June of 2023 now, I'm Ethan. Welcome Crab fans, I'm Liam. <laughs> Glad your signature line is back. That's right. Uh, we, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. Hey, AEW has a pay-per-view this weekend. That's terrible news. Um, they have a television show, a new television show that debuted this past weekend mm-hmm. and uh, did very well. And uh, so that we have that to talk about. The uh, latest twist in the Bloodline saga uh, did monster numbers for WWE SmackDown last week. Mm-hmm. And uh, NXT did their best rating in uh, two years this week for a raw world heavyweight title match on the show so very literally so much to talk about uh let's begin with this uh the usos turning on uh the bloodline setting up a bloodline civil war Mm -hmm. at money in the bank first of all tremendous branding just absolutely (laughs) tremendous branding Secondly, they did like close to three million viewers for that quarter hour with uh, with the uh, Jay turning on uh, on Roman, finally giving his answer as to whether he was going to fall in line or not. And the answer was no. So um, set up the next twist. People are really interested. It's very cinematic. And uh, people seem to enjoy it. What do you think of the uh, the Usos versus Roman and Solo? Yeah, it was a it was a great angle. Um, and yeah, obviously people are are really into it, and it sets up a a match. I think people want to see. Uh, it also has a fun uh, so- a byproduct. I was talking with one of our, our listeners. That's right, we have plural now. Uh, on Twitter about this this past week, but it's also a great excuse to not have to book any challengers for Roman Reigns. Sure. You can just do tag matches all summer now. Um, so yeah, it's a, uh, it was, it was a great angle timing. The bump Roman took on the super kick was phenomenal. Just a, just a really well-timed and, and well executed angle. Um, and yeah, we, we talked about that like prior to, the Sami Zayn stuff at the beginning of the year uh, felt like the bloodline stuff was really long in the tooth. And then they did the Sami Zayn stuff and, and moved Sammy away from them. And I wasn't really into the idea of just kind of continuing on business as usual. So I'm glad they've accelerated it again to now have the Usos break off as baby faces and have them uh, have them fight Roman. And it's one of those things where when you make a, a character or a faction as dominant as as they have made the bloodline over the last few years your only options really are to have someone new come in say like i don't know cody rhodes at wrestlemania and he could be the one to end it or you have to have them break break up and and do a civil war you know um and so you know hopefully this goes better than like or is has a better I should say has a better payoff than say like the wolf pack splitting from the NWO, for instance, which I think was a fine idea in theory, but didn't really go anywhere. Sure. It's well, hopefully someone somewhere in this industry has learned a lesson over the past <laughs> 25 years. I have little evidence to suggest that's true, but we can hope. Monday Night Raw set up a cup the kind of the rest of the Money in the Bank card. There are only five matches announced for this show, but we can uh, preview that here real quick. That is coming up next weekend, next Saturday, one week from Saturday. Thank you for getting your Michael Cole branding of. Thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, that's a Vince McMahon thing. Nobody knows dates, so you have to say things like one week from Saturday. Or you have to do a lot of like math and logistical work in your head <laughs> instead of just saying July 1st and then say looking at a calendar. Anyway, uh, one week from Saturday. Uh, so we talked about the Bloodline Civil War match, Seth Rollins versus Finn Bauer. So they tried to heat this up this week. And they had Finn attack Seth on Raw. And then they also had Finn attack Seth on NXT. So these poor guys have to work <laughs> another day every week. Uh, they have to go to Orlando and work the Performance Center now. Uh, because, well, here's what the Performance Center has done. <laughs> It's created uh, many dozens of uh, men and women that are very good at um, uh, jumping jacks. Mm -hmm. Squatting. Mm -hmm. Um, Not very good at uh, at pro wrestling, as it turns out. Mm. Yeah. So they have to call guys that are good at pro wrestling to come down and be on the show. Mm Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Seth and Finn Balor in a rematch from uh, the 2016 SummerSlam? 15 SummerSlam? Uh, I think 16? it's six. I think it's 16. I think so. Um, Cody Rhodes versus Dominic Mysterio in a fever dream match. <laughs> it's a fun little thing for both guys to do while Cody waits for Brock to show up. Mm-hmm. Which may may be on this on this show, uh, if not, it'll be on Raw, the following Raw in Baltimore. Um, money depends in the if, bank depends if Brock feels like flying, taking the however many hour flight from Saskatchewan to uh, to London. Yeah, yeah, very true. Um, women's money in the bank match. So the field has been finalized, and it is as of course as was written in the stars. Zelina Vega, Bailey, Io Sky, Zoe Stark, Becky Lynch, and Trish Stratus. Mm-hmm. I know you were fascinated that 47 year old Trish Stratus wants to do a ladder match. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm less so just because she's back and she's in for the summer at least. And she wants to do stuff she hasn't done before, and why not? Why wouldn't you do a ladder match if you could do a ladder match? Because you're like a 47 year old mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I just like to, again like to reiterate. Uh, here in 2023, 47 year old women look like Trish Stratus. Uh, when I was a child, 47 year old women. <laughs> Looked like uh, Detective Harvey Bullock. <laughs> so, uh, 47 ain't what it used to be. True. Particularly if you've been retired since you were 29. Fair. You know? <laughs> it is a, uh, that's even fun. I mean, I know she retired for her own reasons. Yeah. But the send off they gave her is kind of even funnier when you realize she wasn't even 30 yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very much so. Anyway, I'm excited about that. Well, it's just Becky, interesting because I, Zoe's already in it. Or you can give the right. rest of the field. Sorry, we'll, we'll get to that. I did give the rest of the field. But I was just going to add that uh, we've also been talking about how Becky Lynch is uh, milling in her performances. Oh. <laughs> Unfathomably. She, she's, she's now recruited Kevin Owens to be in her little skits. Yes. And uh, yeah, did not, not, not taking this seriously at all. Um, which I think is fine. <laughs> um, because this is, you would assume a pit stop for her, Zoe and Trish on the way to whatever they do at summer slam the following month. So, right. Yeah. Like what, whatever, just, <laughs> um, I mean, I guess, I guess, I mean, we, I mean, we kind of speculated last week. I don't think Zoe or Trish would win money <laughs> in the bank. But so you, they're just in there to do spots with with Becky and then and then set up whatever they do after that. Yeah. 
EOS guy is the betting favorite for whatever that's worth. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's worth something. Maybe it's worth nothing. I'm not sure. But I think a baby face EOS guy makes sense. I was going to say, back back in the day, there was always the thing of like when they started doing two money in the banks. This is when they had two men's matches. But Vince didn't like two heels or two faces to win on the same night. Right. So if you think there's a likely chance that, say, a priest or a or a Logan Paul might win the men's match, then EO as the baby face, as a, someone about to turn baby face, winning the uh, the women's briefcase might make a little bit more sense, too. And it's probably a SmackDown person also. So uh, Zelina or Bailey would be the other uh, the other likely choices there. Mm-hmm. Um, then the men's money in the ladder, money in the ladder bank match, money in the bank <laughs> ladder match. Ricochet versus Nakamura versus LA Knight versus Santos Escobar versus Butch versus Damian Priest. <laughs> Versus the newly added Logan Paul. Logan Paul showed up and just declared for the match on Raw this past week, which is fine by me. And now I think he's going to win it. What do you think? Yeah. Seems like something they would like if he won it and then just, you know, had the money in the bank briefcase sitting next to him on his couch when he does his podcast or whatever for the next six months. Um, and, uh, ultimately, uh, I, I, uh, I think this would be fine because it would be funny. Uh, and also whoever wins this is going to cash in on Seth's belt, which does, uh, does not matter. So it's fine. Whoever give it to whoever. <laughs> yeah. LA Knight was still the betting favorite last time I looked, which is kind of fascinating. <laughs> yeah. He did get a crazy reaction in, uh, where were they? They were in, uh, Cleveland last week. Well, it's become the trendy thing to do, to cheer L.A. Knight. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it in this environment. <laughs> I'm just saying it's, like, become a thing to cheer him. I, sure. I don't necessarily think it's... But honestly, it's been a while since a WWE crowd has picked somebody that wasn't getting pushed to do this <laughs> with. They've been uh, they've been a lot more uh, uh, friendly to whatever WWE wanted to give them over the last couple of years since, you know, all of the fans who went to WWE shows to antagonize the company, uh, you know, either stopped watching or, you know, started going to AEW shows or whatever. So, right. um, This, it is interesting. They're not like actively booing any baby faces that I can think of at the moment, but they, they picked this guy who was, who like, lost by roll up to Xavier Woods a month ago and <laughs> they just decided he's a big star now. Yep. It's uh it's all quite odd to see, frankly. But uh all right. Uh and then we'll uh we can just touch on the NXT stuff here real quick. Uh it's Nick Khan's idea to put um main roster stars on NXT. Mm-hmm and um they did their best ever rating in the 18 to 49 demo this week with uh baron corbin <laughs> and with uh with seth rollins so there's uh that's certainly very exciting um it's it's very interesting um, yeah I, I mean i guess you can't put like seth on the show every week but cycling in a bigger i mean they've been having guys go down there to work little programs but it's all like ziggler level guys for the most part right but hey you put like an actual real star on the show and yeah it turns out people will tune in for that so you know there's other people you could mix in i think at the seth level from time to time that could that could help uh bump that average up a little bit and it's negotiation season so uncle nick has his eye on uh, a big deal for Mm -hmm. nxt and uh, so the timing for this could really couldn't be any better. And uh, I'm just going to save some time in any future interviews with Nick Khan. Yes, he is open to adding more hours of television. <laughs> yes. Very true. He was raw and SmackDown were 12 hours. Every week. <laughs> Unbelievable. A fascinating man that I want him that I want to uh, read me a bedtime story. Would I would I would I supply more content to a network if they paid me money? 
Yes, I would. <laughs> wow. This is Groundbreaking. Breaking news here. <laughs> Thanks for the scoop, Nick. It's tremendous. Who's better at uh, at uh, handling the press, Nick Khan or Tony Khan? Oh, Nick. No question. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's another banner Tony Khan media call today. <laughs> Can't wait for his post Forbidden Door media scrum on Sunday night. I hope they put Gato on that with him. Oh my lord, <laughs> that would be must see, actually. Yeah, <laughs> add some real star power to this thing. <laughs> then so Jato just... out there too. Just send the whole Bullet Club. Sure. So just well, Jato's not in the Bullet Club anymore. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, yeah, it's. Great, your joke is much better now that it's uh, technically (laughs) accurate. All right, uh, Forbidden Door is coming up this weekend. But first, AEW Collision debuted this past weekend, and uh, it's continuing this coming weekend. And uh, it's the One Bill Phil show. It is CM Punk. They came very close to... uh, Beating Dynamite from last week in their first outing. And I can't remember off the top of my head whether they just (laughs) beat them in the demo or Mm -hmm. they just beat them in total viewers. I believe they were a little lower in total viewers, but did beat them in the demo. Yeah, I believe you're right. But the uh, the total viewers number was very close. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, CM Punk came out and addressed his enemies. <laughs> he sure did. What'd you think of the counterfeit box line? It was a good line. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he and fans outside of Chicago handle, <laughs> handle themselves because, oh, I, yes. because I think, you don't say that line, and if you're a normal person that's a little bit self-aware, you can't say that line and think that at least a portion of the audience isn't going to want to boo you for saying that. So, like, seems like he's he's you know, and we all know, we all know. I don't know if you know this or not, but he's a big fan of Bret Hart. What? Um, yeah, he and he and uh, he and Mr. Dickhead. Uh, <laughs> And the other one uh, bond bonded over this this fact and uh, and uh, you know so he wants so I think I felt like that was a little bit of a stoke the fires of a when we're in punk let's let's make sure I'm a mega baby face when I'm in punk country and right. the rest of the time I will be the meanest man you've ever seen <laughs> right which comes naturally it comes it's naturally it it's really not much of a stretch. <laughs> <It really isn't. laughs> for him for him to play the part of the meanest man you've ever seen that's right <laughs> but it was a it was a very entertaining promo he's uh an incredible this is <laughs> this is what i like to call the dichotomy of phil <laughs> uh he is in fact uh despite being very uh cantankerous at times he's mm-hmm. one of the most captivating television performers in the last 30 years of pro wrestling so you know, had a had a great promo to open the show, had a very good six band to end the show. It's and there's no doubt that that show is around him, which does make it funnier to think about what would have happened if <laughs> if he blew it up at the 11th hour, like it looked like it was going to for a minute there. Like what, how quickly this show would have just spiraled, because based on what they did on this show, there is there's some, you know, some guys on it. <laughs> Right. But it's there's nobody near his level and there's nobody that felt like the show was being built around other than him. So, you know, he's he's it got to very quickly become Rampage 2.0. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So, you know, for the time being, as long as, as Punk's happy and healthy, uh, you know, he's <laughs> he's got himself his own little sandbox to play in. And hey, he can still when. <laughs> When the mood strikes him or uh, or Tony, he can he can also show up on a Wednesday here and there as well, including the very first week he's officially back. 
Uh, Dave Meltzer did an interview on, uh, I think, post wrestling this week. He uh, he hopped on, and uh, I wanted to talk about. <laughs> he said he said an AEW top guy told him, "quote We were told we would only have to deal with this guy, this guy being Punk, at pay per views, and here we are, week one. He's already on Dynamite." <laughs> It's hilarious. And Tony made the decision, you know, elite, why don't you uh why don't you stay in California this week? It's great. But hey, everybody's gonna be in the house on Sunday. Everyone is gonna be under one roof, which really I would try to sell the pay-per-view around. <laughs> Just have a camera constantly <laughs> uh positioned on like the parking lot. <laughs> to see yes. where they both arrive see what rooms they go into, how close they are, have Alex Marvez get like a tape measurer and show us how close their their respective locker rooms are to each other. We do not need Alex Marvez <laughs> for this. Of that, I'm sure. But yeah, that's very fun. Uh, so six-man tag in week one for Punk, and then week two, eight-man tag. Punk, his friends, FTR, and uh, Ricky Starks. Facing uh, the Bullet Club Gold and Billy Gunn's sons, so it's it's very interesting. Uh, you just got so, a really funny promo about setting up this match. You know, you know, uh, I think you figured something about out about what Juice has figured out. That's right. Which is to be a star <laughs> in pro wrestling when they don't when they see nothing in you. And you yes. want to get noticed in pro wrestling. What you need to do is just be an absolute weirdo freak and talk in a funny cartoon voice. Yes. And then you start getting noticed and it is working. It is working like a, that strategy, working like a charm for, for my main man, Juice. Yes. Uh, the collision announced team was uh, the corpse of Jim Ross, <laughs> Kevin Kelly, and uh, Nigel McGuinness and uh, JR was only there for the main event. And JR did that thing that he does a couple times a year where he falls and blacks his eye. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they made the 70, uh, the septuagenarian, they made him fly from uh, Florida to Illinois. And uh, where he's got, he's got a wheelchair guy that picks him up at his house. And uh, takes him to the airport, and then uh, he gets a wheelchair from the vehicle to the terminal, and then uh, on and on and on. He's just wheel wheelchairing through airports. And uh, at what point this becomes elder abuse? I think we may have passed the point where this has become elder abuse. But uh, Jim was clearly not himself um, calling that main event match. And uh, I would just like to say, uh, Nigel McGuinness... I think used to be a good color commentator. <laughs> I don't know whether it's uh, WWE brain after working there for several years, whether that that ruined him or if, as you pointed out, his heart is really just um, into being a magician mm-hmm. uh, and doing magic. But Nigel McGuinness oozes um, insincerity and uh, fake when I hear him on commentary now. And I I can't I can't stand him on commentary anymore. <laughs> uh, Kevin Kelly still uh, quite good at his job. A uh, little rusty, little uh, some uh, some kinks to iron out here in week one, but also he's working uh, in an absolute madhouse. So I'm sure it'll, it'll be an adjustment for him. But uh, what did you think of the commentary on the show? Yeah, I thought I thought Kevin was pretty good. He's he's that like yeah he hasn't called a show like this in. <laughs> years and years 20 years right it's so like yeah you don't you don't necessarily blame him for not quite having his sea legs back he's a good lead play-by-play guy yeah i didn't i don't think nigel has been good in what i've heard of him since he's been in this roh aw uh part-time commentator role um i think you have ian ian riccoboni and caprice coleman on your on your payroll and they're probably the two best announcers in your company Yep. Um, so they should probably be doing the show and not the ROH show that's on a subscription service that like 9,000 people 
have. Yeah. Um, but I understand their voice. But again, like Kevin, Kevin and Nigel is an ROH team. So you can't even be like, yep. well, Ian and Caprice are so strongly, uh, you know, we, we don't want the ROH branding on this show. It's like, well, these are, this is like the ROH, unless you got Steve Carino, like this is the ROH commentary team. Right. So like, I don't, I don't, I, so I would maybe just get, maybe just have gotten Ian and Caprice to do it, but I think Kevin will be fine. Maybe. And we'll, we'll see, we'll see what they do with Nigel. Um, and, and how he, he gets, uh, gets into a, into a role, uh, into his role going forward. Sure. All right. We've uh, beaten around the bush quite enough. It's time to preview forbidden door, which is going up this weekend. Oh boy. Um, a in a women's Owen Hart Cup tournament found Owen Hart Foundation Cup tournament. Hang on, Wikipedia has this listed incorrectly. The name of the tournament is the Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament. Mm-hmm. That is the name of the tournament. And uh, on the pre show at Forbidden Door, Athena will be wrestling Billy Starks. And uh, we'll see how Toronto reacts to young Billy. And uh, Athena, as we know, is a feared shooter. <laughs> uh, yeah, all of the uh, all of the right wing podcasters uh, told me so. <laughs> yes. Yes. There was not just one freak incident mm-hmm. that they immediately turned into an angle. It's right. right. She's, she's been shooting on women for months and. Right. And Tony is powerless to stop her. Yeah. They have made that her character. It's interesting. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Adam Cole is wrestling filthy Tom Waller. Sure. Why not? That's a, uh, a, a an EWR match. Or a, yes. Yes. A, or one of those uh, wrestling sim, wrestling Booker sim game. <laughs> y- yes. Matthew. They, uh, yeah, I don't think they've announced that on TV yet. I guess that's coming during Rampage this weekend or this Friday night. They're making that official, but they announced that during uh, taping last night. Uh, women's world title. Tony Storm defending against NJPW Strong Women's Champion Willow Nightingale. Might we presume that this originally was going to be Tony versus Mercedes? We might. We might. <laughs> Instead, Tony versus Willow. Should be a fun match, but it feels very uh, much like a Rampage match. Agreed. Yeah, I think we've seen this match <laughs> on Rampage and Dynamite a few times, in fact. So, um, but they've, yeah, they're doing the best with what they have with uh, Jamie Hurt and Britt just hasn't been on TV. Um, and yeah, this is what we got. We got Sky Blue and Willow, and that's that's it <laughs> on the babyface side currently. They have so many people under contract and they're just not using anymore. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or they can't use or are are hurt or Yeah. Like I mean, I guess so I guess weird. I guess it's a she's she's technically a new Japan wrestler and she has the strong belt. So I right. guess that's that's why she's in the spot in on this show. But yeah, it's like she does she does around and was feuding with the outcasts, I think. So you'd think you'd want to get to maybe her and Tony at some point, but I guess not on this show. They disagree. They disagree. Unreal. Uh the AEW international title is on the line in a four-way. It's four guys we saw have a tag team match on Dynamite this week. It's Orange Cassidy defending against Zack Saber, Shibata. And Daniel Garcia again feels like a bit of a fever dream match. A little bit. Um, we just we just continue the the orange. I don't think orange is going to lose this belt in a four way. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Well, it seems unlikely. It seems unlikely. Um, the Owen Hart Foundation Men's Tournament in a first round match. CM Punk wrestles Satoshi Kojima. <laughs> What? This is uh, after the Kenta match fell through. Mm -hmm. Which, depending on who you ask, (laughs) Phil was either really on board for this and and Kenta bailed the 11th hour or 
Phil was never on board for this, despite Kenta campaigning for it for like two years. Very strange. I have no idea what happened here. I mean, I think uh, uh, whatever happened, Kojima's a better worker in this stage of the game than Kenta is. <laughs> so it'll be a much better match, I think. Because that's the secret. Like, it would be a funny meme match to do Punk versus Kenta. Um, but unless you, like, sent both guys out there and told them they were winning, <laughs> uh, I don't think it would be very entertaining to watch them have a match because when's the last time Kenta had a good match? Like, against Bob Roode on a takeover in 2017? Kenta hasn't tried in a long time, and he's very hurt. He's always very hurt. Sure. Um, he also did that ladder match with Tanahashi where they both almost. Oh, that's him, so. that's true. That was a good. That was a good, and insane match. <laughs> yeah. So he tries about once a year. <laughs> um, I don't. I yeah. I I don't. I don't know why the match isn't happening because nobody has reported one cohesive thing. <laughs> right. Um. I, I I don't know, but I think you're you're correct in saying that it wouldn't be a very good match at this stage. And uh, Punk Punk can have a Punk match. I don't know if he's uh, the guy who can go out there and work hard enough for two guys anymore. Okay. Not that he wouldn't. Just I don't know if he's that guy anymore. Mm-hmm. All right, ten man tag, the Blackpool Combat Club. Of John Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, Claudio Castagnoli teaming with Konosuke Takeshita and Shoto Umino versus Ol Hanger, the Young Bucks, Eddie Kingston, and Tomohiro Ishii. That's a uh, that's a random tag. <laughs> I liked I liked the um, Moxley uh, promo on Dynamite this week, um, selling this match. Yeah, I thought yeah, him and him and Eddie together, I thought were uh were really good. And it gives Moxley something to do besides just be like, we're gonna grapple we're gonna grapple your eyeballs out of their socket <laughs> like he does every week otherwise. Yeah. Sure. Um and again, CM Punk and the Elite under the same roof. What could possibly mm-hmm. go wrong? <laughs> Very exciting. The real main event. What what is what are the odds that like this elite match goes on first and then they just leave before and <laughs> pretty high, I think. I think the odds of that are pretty high. <laughs> Get him out of there. Yeah. Let the adults wrestle. <laughs> Uh, Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, and Minoru Suzuki will be facing Sting, Darby Allen, and a mystery partner. You and I both independently came to the conclusion that Sting and Darby's mystery partner is going to be Tetsuya Naito. Mm-hmm. The internet appeared to come to the conclusion this week that their mystery partner is going to be Bill Goldberg. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Um, either makes sense, I guess. But I think Naito is far more likely. Yeah, I mean, just based on it being on this show, yeah, and them talking about how it's somebody with history with Jericho, which I, I guess Bill Goldberg <laughs> technically qualifies for that. Sure. Um, but yeah, it would, and the it, yeah, Naito's didn't work last year's show, but it seems like he's a big star to leave off of a show like this, even if he's not really pushed at the tippy top level and can't really do nothing no more. Uh, yeah. I feels like it feels like Naito would make the most sense just based on this being the crossover with new Japan show. So we'll see. <laughs> feels like, I mean, Tony had like another one of those things he does when someone asks him a question about somebody that's coming in. Yeah. And he's like, I lo- we've had a lot of conversations and I really like talking to Bill and uh, we'll have to see down the road if anything comes of that. So, like, he certainly wants you to think that he's bringing Bill Goldberg in at some point. Right. He uh, he definitely does. Um, he also managed to get in a shot at Ariel Helwani when speaking to the press this week. Oh, which I missed is, this. Which is just wonderful. Um, Ariel reported this week that uh, the cons were interested in and uh in buying um bellator yeah bellator 
the MMA promotion. And uh, Khan said that, uh, well, that's inaccurate, uh, but that's what you get with Ariel Helwani. <laughs> <laughs> and he says they haven't had any conversations about buying Bellator, which is funny. Um, he, he said, uh, quote, he has nice conversations with Bill, unquote, but he doesn't see him as a good fit for Sting and Darby Allen's partner on Sunday. So there you go. Um, yeah, I don't think, uh, I think Naito's much, 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 much more likely. Uh, MJF versus Hiroshi Tanahashi for the AEW World Championship. Tanahashi needs like six months off. He needs six months off both to heal his body and also to keep them from jobbing him out to like Chase Owens or somebody. Which they did. Yes. <laughs> they actually did. Yeah, that sounds like a thing. I would. I just picked a random name. No, they actually had him Chase Owens beat Tanahashi. <laughs> like in the G1, they did this. <laughs> Clean. Embarrassing. Clean in the middle with his finish. Unbelievable. Yes. Yes. They're not really protecting him in the book anymore. Yeah, he teams up with the dads a lot. Um, that's just it's not fair. It's not fair and it's not right. Um no one thinks Tanahashi is winning the AEW world title. So I don't know why we're why we're doing the match, frankly. Both the world title matches on this show. It feels like why didn't you just do like a like a tag match? You could have done MJF and Sonata as the two world champions teaming up against uh, the the united force of great hair of, of Jack Perry and Tanahashi. Sure, why not? Yeah, that way you wouldn't know the finish. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> to both matches. Good lord. Uh, as you mentioned, Sonata def- defending the IWGP world title against the Jungle Boy. And then your two main events... I wouldn't want to follow either one. Um, for their sake, I hope Danielson and Okada get to go on first. But uh, Brian Danielson will face Kazuchika Okada. I think you're more excited about everything about this show than I am. But do uh, you want to talk about how excited you are for this match? Yeah, these are, uh, in my opinion, probably the two greatest wrestlers of their generation. And there, this is what the what people were like. I don't I feel like using this word has a weird context, but fantasizing about, Whoa. and and <laughs> when this concept was announced, when the idea of AEW working with New Japan was even just like a glimmer in people's eye, and certainly when Danielson came in in twenty one, and then he got hurt last year, and they weren't going to do him versus Okada last year. They were going to do him versus Saber, I think which would have been fun, but whatever. But it's like, yeah, this is, if you're trying to sell this show as generational dream matches between the greatest wrestlers of both companies, this is that. (laughs) This is, this is a match. Like, I, I can't imagine there's ever been a match that has more expectations on it coming in. Maybe like, maybe the third, uh, Omega or the fourth Omega Okada match, but like, what match has ever come in with the high, higher expectations than Kazuchika Okada versus Brian Danielson? Maybe none in North America. So, so yeah, suffice to say, yeah, this is as we talked about that. This is all you really needed. Like, <laughs> like the build they've done for the match was fine. But you really just needed to say that you were going to do that match, and you know, I'm I'm sold. <laughs> the same 130 to 150 thousand people buy every 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 AEW pay per view. Mm-hmm. So this idea that we need to let the casuals know who <laughs> who all these people are uh, is uh, disingenuous because the same audience. Watches the shows, same audience, hardcore audience buys every pay per view, regardless of what the card is. It's, it's just, it's, this is for the hardcores by the hardcores. And there you go. 
that we don't need long involved video packages telling us who Okada and Kenny and Kenny Omega Will Osprey are. Like we just don't. Yeah, it's it's, fun. it's a waste of everyone's time. <laughs> it's a waste yes. of everyone's time to do that anyway. It's like yeah, other than like the Punk, the first pay per view with Punk on it did like two hundred thousand, and I think the. I feel like the the hangman kenny pay-per-view did okay but not that level so it's like yeah otherwise you have your baseline and then uh, i know the mjf danielson iron man show did better on replays than like they ever had before but yeah overall you've got your base of who's gonna buy this show and uh yeah you've <laughs> you're giving them the biggest dream match probably that you could <laughs> in in professional wrestling for this fan base anyway sure. and kenny omega and will osprey will meet again for the united states championship the iwgp united states championship in a rematch of most people's consensus match of the year to this point so far um like I said, I hope for everyone else's sake, these guys go on last. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll see. Uh, they they did call Danielson versus Okada the main event on commentary in that final segment, but sure did. Lots of you know that term in wrestling doesn't always mean the same. <laughs> doesn't mean go on last. So um, we'll have to see. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to follow what <laughs> what they're gonna do. Yeah. Yep, that's very strange. Very strange? What? I don't know why I said that. <laughs> not very strange. It makes sense. It's not strange at all. Okay. Um, just odds and ends, loose ends, dynamite this week was an all time chaotic AEW dynamite. Can you imagine if they had to like shoehorn um, videos for Satoshi Kojima on this show as well? <laughs> It's like they're announcing shows for uh they're announcing matches for Rampage, Collision, Forbidden Door, next week's Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> and uh also shooting ROH angles on the show because why not? Sure, sure. And uh running out the Hardy Boys <laughs> because Jeff can't get into Canada no more. And so uh, the Hardys opened Dynamite against the Guns. Oh, boy. The Hardys look like they're hurting. It's probably best that they can't get into Canada. They're one or both can't get into Canada. Uh, anyway, uh, just an all-time chaotic Dynamite this week. And uh, Fuego del Sol is gone. Um, contract expired. No place for him anymore. Not even on, not even on Rampage or ROH. Apparently, no, no. Of all the guys that get job work there, like pretty Peter Avalon, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and guys like that, Fuego del Sol, no, no room for him, no more. After oh. they made like giving him a contract, a uh, a storyline put on TV. Well, that was another Sammy Guevara thing, and Sammy Guevara also proposed to another woman on TV. So. And he was uh, he was part of the Cody click, right? Like, yeah, Sammy and all those guys are and or were. And if you look at like Cody's friends that are still in the company, uh, you know, <laughs> Preston Vance ain't on TV much. Ricky Starks is on TV a lot, but loses a lot. And uh, now another one, another Another shoe drops here with uh, with Fuego out the door. So, uh, yeah, you know, if you're not if you're not in the uh, the punk camp or the elite camp, you're uh, you're probably in danger, and you're not on TV much. Your your contract's probably uh, a little bit in danger of not getting renewed when when time comes. Yeah. So there's that. All right. Anything else you want to touch on? No, I think that about covers everything. There's just going to be so much wrestling forever now. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Fantastic. I just like these dynamites are going to get so they're 
what you were kind of saying before it's like they're building they're building for this pay-per-view on on sunday they're also building angles for collision and collision will also have angles for the pay-per-view and for presumably next week's dynamite and so we're just always building to these shows which is kind of what they were doing at first with rampage but then they gave up on rampage like a year and a half ago and so then it was just the chaotic two hours of dynamite you really had to pay attention to every week but now now we got two more hours where they're trying so (laughs) more angles to shoot and uh and promos for excalibur to read more Jeff Jarrett doing TNA stuff. <laughs> it's great. It's fantastic. More Karen. More Karen Jarrett. And you get you keep Karen on TV. That's that's all fine by me. That's fine. Uh, they should push her in the women's division. I don't see why not. Yeah, make her make her the make her a coach. Yes. Hey, her and Madison Ma- Rain. <laughs> Madison Rain is the head women's coach. Is this yeah. really a foreign <laughs> an, an idea way out of left field? <laughs> All right. Karen, Karen could teach promo class. There are very few people in that company that I would have teach a promo class ahead of Karen. <laughs> all right. It's getting creepy. Uh, it's all my fault. So, till next time, everybody. I'm Ethan. <laughs> I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. A head women's coach, Madison Rain. What? She has a foot injury right now. Jeez. Does she? That was uh, somebody said that on I think that was on the media call today. Somebody asked Tony about like women and creative and he mentioned Madison Rain and somebody. And Great. said that Madison is is home nursing a foot injury. Awesome. I just like to chime in and add that uh, I like business transactions. <laughs> I'm just to say it's uh, it's a different world that you uh you you you're you're all about like work slacks <laughs> and uh typing up paragraphs about uh things that vaguely may or may not have been announced for this week's episode of ROH. Sure. I uh today went to the stock market and did a business. <laughs> That was my day today. Business-wise, this all seems like appropriate business. (laughs) Yes. That's all I have. All right. I try to keep on keeping on.